Welcome to News Nexus. Today, we're taking you on a journey into one of the most urgent and underreported crises facing the United States. It's not the stock market, not inflation, and not even political conflict. It's something far more basic, yet absolutely essential for survival. Water. For most of us, water has always felt infinite. We turn the tap, and there it is. But that illusion of endless supply is shattering. Across the nation, rivers are shrinking, lakes are vanishing, and aquifers deep beneath the ground are being drained faster than nature can refill them. This is the unfolding U.S. water crisis, and states are running out of water faster than anyone expected. In the next 25 minutes, we'll explore how this crisis began, which regions are hit hardest, what it means for America's future, and whether solutions exist before it's too late. For generations, water was so plentiful in America that people rarely gave it a second thought. Cities built fountains in public squares. Suburban lawns stayed green year-round. Swimming pools, golf courses, and massive farms stretched across dry landscapes. The national mindset was simple. Water was always there and it always would be. But behind the curtain, the numbers tell a very different story. The United States has been living beyond its water budget for decades. In many regions, we've been pumping more water out of rivers, lakes, and aquifers than nature can put back. That imbalance is now reaching a breaking point. No story captures this better than the Colorado River. Once a mighty waterway carving the Grand Canyon, it now struggles to make it all the way to the ocean. Seven states depend on it. Arizona, California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Wyoming. Add to that 30 Native American tribes and even parts of Mexico, and you begin to see how crucial this river really is. Yet its flow has dropped by almost 20% compared to a century ago, and climate change is pushing that decline even faster. Lake Mead and Lake Powell, the two giant reservoirs fed by the Colorado, have dropped to record lows. Satellite photos show dramatic bathtub rings where water used to be. Communities like Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Los Angeles all depend heavily on this shrinking supply. Some experts warn that if nothing changes, the Colorado River system could face structural collapse within a decade. Arizona is a case study in the crisis. Agriculture there consumes massive amounts of water, much of it going to thirsty crops like alfalfa, which is often exported overseas to feed livestock. Farmers have drilled thousands of wells into the desert ground, but those aquifers are running dry. Families in rural areas sometimes find their taps empty not because they didn't pay a bill, but because the water literally isn't there anymore. In Nevada, the story is equally alarming. Lake Mead has dropped so low that decades-old shipwrecks, ghost towns, and even human remains have emerged from the mud. Las Vegas has responded aggressively, banning ornamental grass, recycling almost every drop of wastewater, and becoming one of the most efficient water users in the nation. But the city's survival still depends on a river that is disappearing. California, meanwhile, faces a dual crisis. The state has long been called the nation's breadbasket. One-third of America's vegetables and two-thirds of its fruits and nuts come from here. But all that food comes with an enormous price in water. When surface water runs short during droughts, farmers drill deeper wells, sometimes thousands of feet down. That overpumping causes the land itself to sink, a process called subsidence. In parts of the Central Valley, the ground has dropped by more than 20 feet over the past century. Roads crack, bridges warp, and canals buckle under the pressure. Once an aquifer collapses, it can never fully recover. California is essentially burning through its water savings account, and once it's gone, there's no refill. Moving eastward, we find the Ogallala Aquifer, an underground ocean stretching beneath eight states from South Dakota down to Texas. For decades, it has fueled America's breadbasket, providing irrigation for corn, wheat, soybeans, and cattle ranches. But today, the Ogallala is being drained at unsustainable rates. In parts of Kansas, wells have already gone dry. In Texas, sections of the aquifer are considered effectively gone forever. Scientists estimate that if current trends continue, much of the Ogallala could be unusable within our lifetimes. That means America's agricultural output and even global food security would take a devastating hit. Even in regions where water seems abundant, like the Great Lakes, problems remain. Industrial pollution, invasive species, and competing demand threaten this vast freshwater system. Meanwhile, infrastructure failures in cities like Flint, Michigan, and Jackson, Mississippi remind us that water crises aren't always about scarcity. Sometimes they are about access. 
Contaminated pipes and political neglect can leave thousands without safe drinking water, even when supply isn't the problem. At the heart of all these regional stories lies a common thread. Climate change. Rising global temperatures mean less snowpack in the Rockies, more evaporation from lakes and reservoirs, and more intense, prolonged droughts. When rain does come, it often arrives in violent bursts that flood cities but fail to soak into the soil. Add to this the growing population of the U.S., more people, more cities, more demand, and you have a collision course between natural supply and human need. Think about it this way. America built its modern lifestyle on cheap, abundant water. Lawns in the desert, endless showers, industrial-scale meat production, massive irrigation systems. All of it assumed that water was limitless. But the truth is, the water tab has come due. Already, states are suing one another over water rights. Farmers are clashing with cities. And rural communities are pitted against corporate agriculture. The cost isn't only financial. It's social, political, and deeply human. For the average American, the crisis will hit home in many ways. In the coming years, expect stricter water restrictions, higher utility bills, and in some areas, outright shortages. Farmers may have to leave fields unplanted. Prices for food could rise. Industries that rely on water, from semiconductors to energy production, will face tough choices. And in the most extreme cases, communities may face relocation. Imagine entire towns forced to move, not because of fire, flood, or war, but simply because the water ran out. That's not science fiction. It's already happening in pockets of the West. Yet there are reasons to hope. Some cities are becoming models of water conservation. Las Vegas recycles almost all of its wastewater. San Diego has invested in desalination plants. Farmers are experimenting with drip irrigation, drought-resistant crops, and soil techniques that retain moisture. Technology is also advancing. Atmospheric water generators, which literally pull moisture from the air, are being tested in dry regions. Large-scale desalination, while expensive, may become more viable as costs drop, and smart infrastructure could drastically cut the billions of gallons wasted through leaky pipes every year. But none of these solutions will matter unless the United States faces a hard truth. The old rules of water management no longer apply. Agreements written a hundred years ago, when rivers were fuller and populations smaller, don't match today's reality. The country stands at a crossroads. One path is denial, continuing business as usual until shortages force painful sacrifices. The other path is reform, renegotiating water rights, investing in conservation, and embracing technology before the crisis deepens. Water is not just another resource. It is life itself. Without it, cities crumble, farms fail, and communities vanish. The U.S. water crisis is not a distant warning. It's here, it's now, and it's accelerating. The decisions made today will shape America's future for generations. Will this be the century where America allowed its rivers to dry, its aquifers to collapse, and its people to go thirsty? Or will it be the century where bold action, innovation, and responsibility preserve the most precious resource we have? Thank you for watching News Nexus. If you found this deep dive valuable, please like, share, and subscribe so more people can understand the realities shaping our world. Stay informed, stay aware, and remember, the future flows from the choices we make today.